In today's video, fat burns in a carbohydrate flame. All right guys, before we start today's video, I have the winners, three people who actually went on the comment section of our supplement video for Core Nutritionals and are gonna get every single product that we discussed in that video. So, I had a randomizer pick. These are the three people I'll be reaching out to you guys today to get your information to ship you those supplements. Congratulations, now the video. All right guys, we're back with Science with Steve. What's up, buddy? Woo! Oh, uh, my stomach acid with acid reflux. Too much information. <laughs> Today we're gonna to talk about how we use carbohydrates to burn body fat because I think there's this misconception that carbohydrates store body fat. And I think this is a huge misconception and a lot of the research out there has proven this, but yet people fear carbohydrates, Stephen. I mean, they are pretty scary, you know? Um, this, like, look at the little frosted mini wheat thing. He's, he's intimidating. It's intimidating. And yet, when you actually delve into what is a carbohydrate, I think people have this misconception. I think most of the foods that we think of as high carb are actually high fat. Yes, a lot of them, like pizza, for example. Very high fat, actually normally gonna be more, more calories from fat than carbs. Same with donuts. Donuts have more calories from fat than they do from carbohydrates, yet, a white potato, white rice, these things are almost pure carbs mm. and will not store body fat, okay? But the key with body fat is always gonna be staying in a caloric deficit or maintenance phase. But we wanna talk about why carbohydrates help us burn body fat. And that's why I brought my man in, Steve, with his master's degree in exercise science, with his understanding of biochemistry. So let's talk about a study. Awesome. So this study that we're talking about today is actually talking about the pyruvate carrier molecule and where this comes in in terms of how carbohydrates are involved in fat metabolism is very important because pyruvate is actually the end goal of carbohydrate metabolism. And so when we talk about carbohydrate metabolism, we start with blood glucose that comes all the way down, we have one of two different options. One, the preferred, given that we have enough oxygen, is pyruvate. Now, if we're in a very high intensity exercise, that's where we have lactate, which is just adding an extra hydrogen, and lactate is what we refer to as that lactic acid, or that kind of like what most people associate with that burning sensation within the Burning their sensation at the end of a set, yeah. So, the big thing is, is that it really gets a little bit more in depth on this study talking about how pyruvate is in fact that initiator for the Krebs cycle. Now, for those of you who are maybe not familiar with this, the Krebs cycle is everything to do with using fat as an energy source. This is how we perform what we call oxidative phosphorylation or burning fat for energy and fuel. Um, this is where obviously the vast majority of our energy demands are going to be met from uh, just because it provides so much more energy in terms of ATP, which is our body's main energy system, uh, than the other energy systems that are available. Yeah, so I think there's a lot of misconception around carbohydrates because people look at one part of the process, right? They look at the fact that carbohydrates can be converted to sugars, they hear that word and they get concerned. But when it comes down to the overall process of burning calories, you know, we're gonna put everything on the screen here for you guys. Fearing carbohydrates is probably going to limit your ability to put on muscle. So explain the carbohydrates role in the human body. Right, so not only are carbohydrates obviously used for energy, we kind of covered that. We are also going to see that when carbohydrates in the blood system come up, they tend to elicit what we call, you know, refer to as an insulin response. And that insulinic response helps to shuttle nutrients into the cell. So that doesn't just mean muscle, it doesn't just mean fat, it means nutrients into the cells. And again, it doesn't just mean we're putting carbohydrates or fat into the cells, it could also be proteins. Helping to get other important nutrients to help with muscle building, muscle repair and growth, um, as well as, yes, of course, maybe extra calories if you're in a surplus. Yeah, so I think this is where a lot of people get this idea of insulin being a bad thing. What's funny is, amongst us that are in this place where we're trying to be anabolic or adding lean body mass, insulin is looked at as a positive. However, the term insulin gets used by people who have heard about the diabetic issues, where people who are have diabetes are yeah. gonna have issues converting carbohydrates, okay? But for a healthy human being, a healthy adult, if that is you, okay, you should not fear carbohydrates. You should fear caloric surplus and overeating and over consuming calories beyond what your body needs. Because if you're done growing taller, 
you might just grow fatter, okay? So let's talk a little bit about insulin and its role because I know you mentioned uh, it's going to help partition carbohydrates to multiple tissues. And I think as bodybuilders, and Mm -hmm. maybe Faith can put some pictures and videos of you and I in contest shape, adding carbohydrates to a person helps increase the volume of their muscles. Of course, so not only are we talking about just energy, we're also talking about energy reserves. So in the same way that creatine is an energy reserve that's stored with water within the muscle, which helps make it more voluminous, uh, glycogen is similar. Now, glycogen is obviously going to have a little bit more um, in terms of the amount that we can store and calories available for being utilized. But it's essentially adding more muscle volume because those carbohydrates, when stored as glycogen within the muscle, are stored with water. So now, instead of having a muscle that's maybe a little bit flatter, it's a little bit fuller. Making sure that you have carbohydrates within your system is a big part of this. How you train and being active is also a big part of this. Um, So yes, we absolutely want to have carbohydrates within our system if our goal is to increase and maximize muscularity. um, And then of course, to uh, maximize our performance in the gym for those same kind of training principles that do so. Yeah, so I think as athletes, when we're trying to train to put on muscle, we want to make sure we can perform, and you're going to perform suboptimally if you have a depleted or a flat muscle. Correct. And we see that there's definitely a good amount of research that shows that, particularly in push exercises, um, glycogen stores depleting can have a big impact on your performance as well. Yeah. Yep. So the, the, the purpose of this video is just that we don't want to stop demonizing carbohydrates, stop demonizing insulin. Uh, I think the insulogenic model of obesity has been disproven. Sugar did not cause the obesity epidemic, right? It's multifactored, um, but c- calories drive that, right? Yes. So as athletes, you know, we're regularly consuming four to 500 carbohydrates per day between Steven and I, that's that's a pretty normal range for us. Our female athletes are usually between two and 300 mm-hmm. at a much smaller size. And I do not avoid sugar, okay? As long as we are paying attention to our overall macro ratios, protein, carbs, fats, getting adequate fiber, getting adequate you know minerals and vitamins, sugar is not something that I typically avoid. In fact, for me, it helps me get all my car- calories in without yes. feeling bloated. And one of the other fun things that we can talk about uh, in terms of insulin response and carbohydrates is something called GLUT4, which is actually something within your muscle cells that helps to shunt and bring down insulin response when you're active because it's doing insulin's job, which is bringing that glucose into the muscle cell to be used as fuel. So if you really also want to like be on the safe side, so to speak, you can have your more processed and or sugary carbs easier to digest things around your physical activity. And GLUT4 is also going to help with that as well, if it's still a concern for you. Well, if anybody knows me or Steven, we, I typically will have something sugary either before the gym or during the gym. And I find that the benefits increase the less body fat I have. So I will typically have something sugary with me in my gym bag at all times because I will go, you know, into a state where I start to feel a little off if I'm in the gym and I haven't had enough carbohydrates. So, and they're easier to digest, which means you're getting that nutrition into your bloodstream and available to your body to be used more quickly. Yeah. So the, the big picture here is you want to have a good overall approach. You don't need to fear carbohydrates. You certainly shouldn't fear carbs, especially if you understand what carbohydrates are. Okay. It's not necessarily donuts and pizza that are carbohydrates. Yes, those have carbohydrates in them, but you're fearing an excess of calories from foods that are hyper palatable. There's a big difference between eating pizza and eating a baked potato. I promise you, it's very difficult to overconsume to the point of gluttony a baked potato, unless you're adding things like butter, sour cream, and cheese, which now you're adding in all the fats. Correct. All very heavy fat sources at that point. (laughs) Yeah. So take a look at your overall approach, guys. If you don't really know where to start, don't forget, we actually have a free nutrition calculator. It's a health calculator. It can help you come up with your calories, your macros, your body fat percentage, even helps you come up with high and low protein options, different meal plans. All right, guys. So that's going to be it for today with Science with Steve. Make sure you go check out Steve's Instagram below. Also, he's got a great YouTube channel that you can check out or just come to a bodybuilding show. We'll see you at the Arnold. We'll talk to you guys soon. In today's video, why fats burn. Nope, Mm, screwed it up. In today's video, hold on, starting over. (laughs) He's doing doing jazz hands. (laughs) All right, guys, before we start, Mm -hmm. Too much monster. You got it this time? You ready? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, it's like a muscle. You got to warm it up. <laughs>